Okay, and as Susan said, if you do have any questions, please put it into the chat box or there's also the Q&A function. Either way, we'll be able to answer the questions. If there are some questions that are that um, we think will be good for everyone and beneficial for everyone to talk about, then we will save those for the end and let you know and then we'll discuss them at that time. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as Susan said, my name is Liz Dunsmore, and I am the Energy Accounts Specialist for San Luis Obispo and Morro Bay, um, or San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties, excuse me. Um, and um, so we'll start off with a quick video. Liz, we can't hear the sound. It's very quiet. Did you say you can't hear the sound? Yeah, it's really low. So, oh. so we got to see this wonderful video, but nobody could really hear anything. I know I couldn't hear anything. My apologies for that. Okay, um, <laughs> we will just go ahead and skip, skip ahead and um, we will have this, the video later too, so that it can be viewed again. My apologies for that. Thank you for letting me know, Susan. Oh, okay. So tonight, what we are going to cover is we have a few logistics, and then I will go ahead and give the presentation. And as I said, we'll have a QA and a uh, session at the end, so we can have specific questions that are answered. Um, Susan will be monitoring the chat and the Q&A function as we go along, and so she'll be able to answer questions. Um, but if there's any that she didn't, wasn't able to answer, or if we have some that we think everyone will benefit from, then we will do them at the end. Okay, so who are we? We are Central Coast Community Energy. We were formerly Monterey Bay Community Power, but with the expansion down the Central Coast to include San Luis Obispo and more and um, Santa Barbara counties, then we have changed our name to Central Coast Community Energy to better reflect of the customers that we serve. And this was effective in September of 2020. So we have recently, just in the last six months, changed our name. Um, and we ha do have a new website, and it, that is 3cenergy.org. And then we are, also have the acronym 3CE, since Central Coast Community Energy can be kind of a mouthful to say. So to begin, I'm just going to go over a few frequently asked questions. So the first is, is my bill going to increase? And the answer to that is no, your bill is not going to go up. So with 3CE taking over the portion, the generation portion of your electricity, we are just, we are merely doing something that PG&E was doing for you before. So before it was all bundled together and now it's split out between PG&E where they do transmission and distribution and 3CE where we provide the generation, which is where we procure or buy electricity on your behalf and we sell it to you at a 2% discount from PG&E's generation service. So the second question, we typically receive is, will I receive two bills? Again, the answer is no. You will still continue to receive one bill since we do partner with PG&E, and so they will do the billing portion of it. You will see 3CE on your bill after you enroll, um, and we will be on not only the first page, but also on a later page that details your NIM, your, um, your NIM generation portion of your bill, um, but you will still only see one bill and you will still only have to make one payment through to PG&E and then they will remit our portion to us. 
will my service with PG&E be discontinued? Again, the answer is no. So you will still continue to be with PG&E as they are the ones who are in charge of the billing. And then they also own and maintain the power lines that move the electricity to and from the sources and to your home or business. Um, so another question we often receive is, will I lose my PG&E discount, rebate, or program? And again, the answer is no for that. So you will still continue to be able to receive any all of the, the programs that you have through PG&E, such as CARE, FARA, LIHEAP, Medical Baseline, PG&E Employee Discount. All of those programs will still be in place, as well as automatic billing if you have that. Um, and then you also get the benefit of enrolling in any 3CE programs that you might wish to as well, such as our Ag Electrification or Electrify Your Ride or any other programs that we have that you'd like to enroll in. And then another question we often get is, do I have to make my decision today? And again, the answer is no, you do not have to decide today. So you are able to, um, to opt out and go back to bundled service with PG&E at any time. Um, we do have an enrollment period, which for our solar customers enrolling in April is from February through June. Um, and so during that time, it is, you, there is no cost to opt out and you can opt out and return to PG&E and then come back to 3CE at any time. After the enrollment period is over, then there is an, a small administrative cost of $25 per residential account, or I'm sorry, $5 per residential account, $25 per commercial account. And then you do stay with PG&E for one year before being able to re-enroll with 3CE. But I do want to keep want to, you to keep in mind that if Anytime you move between um, service providers, so between 3CE and PG&E or 3CE and SCE, Southern California Edison, if you're down in that area, then you do, it does cause a true up. And so um, you will have a true up for that short time period. Um, and so you just want to keep that in mind if you are deciding whether or not you would like to stay with 3CE. So for our discount programs, like I said, the, the programs will still be in place. So you will still continue to receive CARE, FARA, HEAP, Medical Baseline, PG&E, Employee Discount. All of those programs will continue to be in place. I just wanted to reiterate that. So how does the CCA work with PG&E or with SCE? So what we do is we source or procure electricity for you on your behalf from clean and re renewable sources such as wind, solar, hydroelectric. PG&E or SCE then delivers that electricity through their power lines. And then you, the customer, benefit from the competitive rates and also the clean and, ele clean and renewable electricity by being with 3CE. So CCAs are not a new phenomenon. We are currently enrolling you in um, 3CE, so it is new in this area, but CCAs have, as a whole have been around since 2010. Marin Clean M Energy, or MCE, was the first CCA to start. And CCA stands for Community Choice Aggregator, which is where a community gets together and decides where they want their electricity to come from and then where the revenue they want the revenue to go to. And so Marine Clean Energy was the first area and they said we want to be able to have local control over our electricity supply and our revenue from that and so from that we are starting our the first CCA. So 3CE started in 2018 and we've been serving customers in the Monterey, Santa Cruz and San Benito areas since 2018 and then we have expanded down into San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties after that. There are currently 23 CCAs in the state of California, and it's projected that approximately 50% of um, California customers will are or will soon be CCA customers. So who makes up 3CE? So these are all of the juris member jurisdictions that have decided to join 3CE. So it includes Santa Cruz, San Benito, and Monterey counties, with the exception of King City, um, since they decided to form their own CCA. And then, as I said, we expanded down into San Luis Obispo County, and we enrolled the cities of San Luis Obispo and Morro Bay in January of 2020. And then we again expanded. So the cities of Paso Robles, uh, Pismo Beach, Grover Beach, and Arroyo Grande, and then all of the county of Santa Barbara, with the exception of Buellton and the city of Santa Barbara are enrolling in 2021. 
and then Buellton has elected to enroll um, and they will begin in January of 2022 and the city of Santa Barbara has decided to form their own CCA and so they will they will not be enrolling with us but they have their own CCA. Um, so the county of San Luis Obispo and the city of Atascadero have at this point not elected to join 3CE and so if they um, in the future they are welcome to do so but at this point they are not enrolled with us. So 3CE is a not-for-profit government organization. So this means that we are governed by three boards. We have the policy board, which is made up of, um, of elected officials from our member jurisdiction, and they make the overarching policy decisions. And then we have operations board, which are made up by the city and county administrators and staff, and they make the more detailed operations decisions. Um, and then we also have our community advisory council, and these are volunteer uh, members from all of our jurisdictions who are there to represent the community and represent the people within the community. So each of our boards meets between four and ten times annually um, and within on each board we have different seats. So anyone who has a a population of 50,000 or more gets an individual seat so such as the city of the county of Santa Cruz, the city of Santa Cruz, all of those along the top, they have an individual seat. For those um, jurisdictions that have smaller, in a smaller number or smaller populations, then they share seats. And so we have we have grouped them together into geographical locations. And so, for example, the cities of San Luis Obispo, Morro Bay, and Paso Robles are all grouped together into the San Luis Obispo cities, and they have a rotating um, seat and so currently it is San Luis Obispo and then um, next it'll be Morro Bay and then it be Paso Robles and then it'll go back to San Luis Obispo. So we just rotate through to make sure that everyone is able to be represented. All of our boards are also um, governed, we are under the Brown Act, so all of our boards are public and open, open to the public, and you can find more information about how to view and make public comment for all of our boards on our website. So some of the accomplishments that I wanted to highlight for 3CE is that we are a local choice. And so, and because of that, we have 95% enrollment, which is really great. So this means that we have, we've had 95% of our customers who've decided that, yeah, let's give 3CE a try and see it and see if we like it. And we do like it, so we are going to stay. And so some of the things that we've been able to do for our customers is we have had 12 million dollars that we've been able to invest into energy programs. We've provided an estimated three or sorry 50 million dollars in customer savings over the past three years that we've been in operation. Um, we are on our pathway to have 100% clean and renewable energy before the state's goals um, and we also we have been expanding and we are working on having local um, local representation. So we do have two offices, one in Monterey and then one down here in San Luis Obispo. Um, I am, Susan and I are both located down here in the San Luis Obispo office. And then our main office is up in Monterey. But we want to make sure that we represent the local geographic area. And so we do have an office down here as well. And then we've also received an A rating from SP. And so this is showing that we are financially stable and we're financially secure and we are able to to make good on all of our promises. So one of the things that we were able to do is that with unanimous support from our boards, we were able to have our COVID-19 um, deferred customer electricity savings. So what this means is that in January through April of 2020, we had our typical 7% savings. And then in May and June, we provided a 50% savings for all customers, no matter who they were, what class, customer class, residential, commercial, no matter what, they were, we provided 50% savings during the months of May and June. And then July through December, we had a 2% savings as well. Um, this provided an overall 6.4 million savings for uh, residential customers, 10.9 for commercial, and 5.03 million for agriculture customers um, for a total of 22.4 estimated savings for these customers. So for our pathway to 100% clean and renewable, so we are going to, we are working to reach 
the 60% clean and renewable energy by 2025, which is five years ahead of the state's goals, and then 100% clean and renewable by 2030, which is 15 years ahead of the state's goals. And we are financially uh, beneficial to customers and um, by reducing the operating costs and allowing for more aff affordable and stable rates while still supporting economic development. So some of the programs that we have been able to have and um, launch for the fiscal year 2021 are the um, Electrify Your Ride program, which goes from February 1st through June 30th, um, the Ag Electrification program, which is helping electrify our ag our agriculture industry, such as putting in electric um, electric well pumps and helping buy electric tractors. Um, and then we also have our residential electrification program, which is helping new commercial um, new builds be all electric when they are being built. We do have a lot of information about all the programs that we currently have had and have had in the past, in the past and they are on our website as well um, under the programs tab. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our electrify your your ride program since it's currently happening. So what this is is that you you as a customer um, you must be a 3C e customer to participate, but during between February 1st so now through June 30th of this year, you can receive an incentive when you buy either a new or used electric program, or sorry, electric vehicle. And so there's different, all different types of, of electric vehicles you can buy. You can do the battery electric, the plug-in hybrid, electric motorcycle, hydrogen fuel cell car. Um, and so you would receive an incentive anywhere between $300 all the way up to $4,000 if you are income qualified for a, an electric vehicle. Um, and so to learn more about that, you please visit our website. The website is here on the bottom um, and it is also on our website. So we'll have the website um, URL at the end and then you can look through and find the electric vehicle programs. It's one of the drop down tabs at the end if you don't get this written down all the way. So what are my choices? When, when you're enrolled with 3CE, you are the default service offering is what we call 3C choice. And so this is the one that is sourced with clean and renewable and we'll have the 60% by 2025 and then 100% clean and renewable by 2030. And then you can also, if you choose to, opt up to what's called 3C prime. And this is at an eight tenths of a cent per kilowatt hour um, adder. And it is from 100% renewable energy sources such as wind and solar. And so you're able to opt up to 3C prime as well. And if you would like to do that, then you can either do that so online or by calling our energy advisors. Um, and I'll have that number at the end as well. And we'll keep all of that up. So you will have time to write down all of this information. Um, So for our NEM or net energy metering, also known as NEM customers, we have, um, we have three enrollment periods. And this enrollment period that we are currently in is for our customers who are enrolling in April. And so your enrollment will happen on your meter transition or meter read date in April of this year. And so you should have already received one mailer in February, and then you'll receive a second one in March, and then two mailers post enrollment, one in May and one in June. And as I mentioned before, um, this is the enrollment period. And if you decide to opt out um, and return to bundled service after this period, then you will be, um, you'll have a small administrative fee. And, um, but if you opt out during this enrollment period, then you will, um, you will not have that fee. But do keep in mind that an opt out or a change between PG&E and 3CE does, does require a trip. So as I said, we will be, um, this currently is our April enrollment. We will have three enrollment periods for our solar customers in April, in July, and October. And this is to reduce the number of credits that could potentially be impacted by um, enrolling with 3CE. Because when you enroll with 3CE, your true up date will change from, from when it was until to your enrollment date with 3CE. So if you, have a true up in January, February, March, or April, then you will enroll with 3CE in April and your new true up date will be 
that enrollment date in April. The same for May, June, July, and August, you will enroll in July. And then Oct September, October, November, and December, customers will enroll in October of this year. You will receive not only those four notifications I talked about before, but you'll also receive some extra um, letters and notifications um, and then things like this, such as the webinar to, to remind you and to let you know what is happening um, since NEM, NEM customers tend to have a little bit more of a detailed um, enrollment and detailed um, billing as well. So, um, as I said at the very beginning, we have, we will, you will still continue to receive your bill from PG&E. And so it's the same bill, you'll just have a new look. So on that front page during your, when it's a not your bill, you'll have, it'll look like this, where it goes from before where it said current electric charges and it would tell you your monthly charge, such as for this example, $9.53. And now it will merely be split out. So you'll see more detail on the bill. So it'll talk about the, so you'll see the current pg e electric delivery charges. And then you'll see a line for Central Coast Community Energy Electric Generation Charges. So these generation charges, um, with a typical true up, you have um, a yearly true up and yearly, when you have yearly true up and yearly billing, then you do see $0 for your charges and your credits for each month until you get to your true up year. And so that is what is shown on this first page of the bill. You'll see that $0. But the details, the actual details of how much you have as in charges or credits for your current true up year are shown on a separate page. And so it will be typically for residential customers, it's on page seven of the bill. And it shows you not only your, um, the generation that you've currently, you have for that current period, but it also shows how much you've used. For So for this example, this customer has used, um, used during peak, on off and then generated during off peak. And so you'll see the positive means that they have used electricity, the negative means that they have generated electricity. So it shows you the details and the breakdown of both. And then it adds all of all of your charges and your credits up. And so you get your net charges, which is the amount that you either owe or if it's a negative, it's that credit for the month. And all of this we keep in a running total throughout the year. And that is shown on this same page where it says your true up NIM charges before taxes is. And this, it's that highlighted part down here at the bottom. And this is your total true up for the year. So if you were to true up at this point, this is how many credits you would have or how much you would owe at that point. And so this, since this is a non-true up bill that we're looking at, you can see the amount that you have banked is that $15.52. That but for this month, you do not owe anything to 3CE since it is not your true up bill. So before there was a little bit of information on page two of the bill. So if you took your first page and flipped it over down at the bottom on the right, it would tell, it showed you the distribution and the generation, and it showed you how much um, you were charged for that month for both. Now, however, since PG&E is taking over the distribution and 3CE has the generation portion of it, all you will see is that distribution, and then the generation portion is shown on the 3CE pages. So for net surplus compensation, we do still provide net surplus compensation. And in fact, we provide it at a rate that is almost triple what uh, PG&E provides at the moment. So ours is about six cents per kilowatt hours and theirs is about two cents per kilowatt hour. So net surplus compensation um, at, at your trip, if you generate more electricity than you've used throughout the year, then you can receive net surplus compensation or NSC. And it is shown on your bill, on your true up bill as well. And so for this customer, they had net surplus compensation of $27.62. And so that compensation is applied as a bill credit and it's applied to both the 3CE and PG&E charges. And so it will just be on your PG&E bill as a credit. Unless if you meet a threshold for the dollar amount for, um, 
you can receive a check for your net surplus compensation amount. And so for residential, that threshold is $200 and commercial customers, that threshold is $500. And so if you meet those thresholds and you have $200 or $500 of net surplus compensation or more, then you can request a check from 3CE. And so we will send that to you rather than having it as a bill credit. And if not, then you just have this bill credit that is applied to your PG&E bill. And so on your true up, on your true up bill, you will see this this sort of thing um, where it says your net surplus compensation it tells you the adjustment to your three CEU balance and your credit balance at that time. So I know that was really fast and I'm sure that there are a lot of questions about this. So don't worry, we'll go back and we'll talk about them more. Um, you can also, if you want to talk about your specific account with our energy advisor, then you will be able to call the call center team and talk to an energy advisor and they can look up your specific account and help you and help walk you through that. Um, I just wanted to highlight that we do have some more educational opportunities. So we will have virtual office hours, which um, they, transition back and forth between residential and, um, sorry, between English and in Spanish every other week. So we do have one this Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. in English, one next week in Spanish, and one the following week in English. And if you'd like to register and drop in for these, um, this is where you can talk one-on-one -on -one with it with someone who works for 3CE and just show them your bill, have any questions. If you want to do any sort of um, have a presentation, anything like that, then you can talk to um, one of our energy advisors there and you can register for it to receive the link for these office hours here at 3ce.org slash events. And then you can pick the event that you want to register for and um, sign up for that. So um, these are all of the ways that you can get in, in contact with 3CE. This is the top line is the enrollment pages, and so it details more information about the enrollment. Um, you can read it at your leisure, and then if you have questions, you can email info at 3cenergy.org, or you can call our call center and speak to one of our energy advisors, and that number is here on the screen. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Instagram, and also on Facebook in Espanol, in Facebook in Spanish and we are available to assist you at that time. So I will leave it on this page so that you have time to write down this information um, and we will go ahead and um, do the, the questions at this time. All right, Liz, you ready for your first question? I am. All right, so Riley asks, will this webinar recording be sent out as he would like to share it with his supervisor and they are a business account? Um, it will not be sent out, but it will be available later if you would like to do that. We can also, since you are a business account, we can um, get in contact with you and um, have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you and your supervisor as well. Um, we'll provide you, Riley, with the information um, of how to get in contact with us if you would like to set that up. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Next question. Um, I'm confused between net NSC, net surplus compensation, and TRUIP. Could you explain it a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. Um, so net surplus compensation is when, okay, so at the end of the year, you, at the end of your TRUIP year, you will have the TRUIP where you we will look back at the past year and it's not necessarily calendar year, it's the year from, it's when you enrolled until the following year. So for us, it would be April to April. And we will look at your bills and see how much electricity you have generated versus how much electricity you have used throughout that year. And so if you have used more electricity than you've generated, which most customers are in this case, um, since solar providers try and and have your house set up so that you're approximately 100% um, equal for the, your usage, then, um, so most people are in that area where they have, they 
just about break even or they use a little bit more than they produce. And so that will be your true up. And at that time, you would pay for the electricity that you have used throughout the year, whether it be $10, $100, however much it is for that 12 months. Net surplus compensation is where you have generated more electricity than you've used throughout the year. And so this could happen if you say, set your solar panels up and you are a family of four and then your, your kids went away, moved out, went to college, moved down the road. And so now instead of having four people using electricity, you have just two people. And so you've reduced the total amount of electricity that you use. And so you end up over generating with your solar panels throughout the year. And so when that happens, we will provide net surplus compensation where we see the number of kilowatt hours that you have over generated and we'll pay you that six cents per kilowatt hour for, um, for each kilowatt hour that you have generated over what you've used. I hope that helps. I do know that it is it can be quite uh, a lot. So if you do have more if specific questions about your account and you want to ask more, then do please call our call center and we'll be able to help you with that. Thank you, Liz. Next question. Will the NEM customer have the same rate as they have currently with PG&E? Yes, that's a very good question. They we will have the same rate. So we are following the same rate and the same structure as PG&E with that 2% discount. Um, and so we do have that the same time of use structure that we currently have with PG&E, you will have with 3CE. And then we do provide that 2% discount on all of the, the different rates. Um, so it is, it is the same. Um, and I do want to just make a quick clarification for this. The number at the end is 6227. It was a typo and it was my apologies for that. Um, I'm going to type this in the in the chat. So we have 888-909-6227. My apologies for that. Thank you, Liz. Okay, next question. Do you know how PG&E determines their charges for distribution charges on their bill? How they, so PG&E, determines their charges through how much they need in order to operate as a company. They So they determine their total charges and then they submit those charges to the CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commission. Since they are regulated by the CPUC, they submit those charges and they um, the CPUC approves them or says, no, you need to adjust them and they go back and do that. And so internally they will determine how much they their electricity distribution charges will be. And then from there, they provide that to the customers. And what is distribution charges? Um, what, what actually is a distribution charge, the PG&E? What, what's it for? That's a good question. So distribution charges are for using the electricity, the power lines to move the electricity around. So there's two parts of your electricity service. There's the generation, which is the amount that you use at your home or your business. And then there is the transmission distribution, which is moving that electricity around. And so PG&E um, obviously needs to maintain the power lines. They need to maintenance build new things like that. And so those charges are for the maintenance and um, of the power lines themselves. Oh, sorry, I muted myself. That's right. <laughs> How secure are the energy sources that 3C has, um, our supply and are the prices controlled? So the, the sources are very secure. So one of the things that we did, and um, one of the ways that we, we received the A rating with S&P is that we were able to provide or to go out and contract with customers who provide both short, medium, and long-term contracts that are um, with large development companies, um, such as large solar farms, large wind farms, things like that. We're able to to buy into contracts that are like that. And so we have, we've secured electricity for a long time. And we also do what's called resource adequacy. So we provide, we um, have 115% of the necessary electricity for our customers. And so we have, we make sure that we have plenty of electricity for, for our customers. And I'm sorry, Susan, I forgot the second part of the question. Um, are the prices controlled? So we have supply and control prices. Um, so the the prices are regulated by the CPUC. So PG&E 
submits, like I was saying, they submit their um, their prices to the CPUC who say, this is good, this is not good. Um, and since we currently follow PG&E and we do what's, P, what's called PG&E minus, then in that way, our prices are also um, regulated in that way since we follow PG&E's prices and they are regulated by the CPUC. All right, I'm going to speak over to a EV rebate question and then go back to energies after that. Okay. Um, are the vehicle electric vehicle discounts in addition to state and federal incentives? Yes, they are. And that's what's so great about being enrolled with 3CE is not only do you get your federal and state incentives, PG&E also has incentives through their company. And then you get on top of that 3CE incentives. So you can, you can get an electric vehicle for almost free. Uh, by being with all three, all three, uh, or sorry, with both companies and using the incentives from all three places. Wonderful. Next question. Can the um, NSC net surface compensation be used for PG&E's charges? Yes, they can. So the net surplus compensation is applied as a bill credit, and it can be applied back to uh, PG&E's charges is automatically applied back to PG&E's charges so that you can use it to pay for those charges as well. All right, well, now we go back to energy. Mm -hmm. um, Sylvia asked two questions, but they're, they're actually kind of the same. What is the downside of being enrolled? Or in a different way, what are the opponent's arguments um, to stay with PG&E? Yeah, so there are different reasons that people decide to stay with PG&E. And that is absolutely every customer's choice. So once a member jurisdiction decides to enroll with 3CE and the enrollment period ends, then it is up to every individual customer whether they want to stay with 3CE or return a bundled customer with PG&E. And some people do that, people do that because they are loyal to PG&E, they've worked with PG&E, they, they know the brand, they like to be with PG&E. Um, and so they decide to re-enroll with, or to stay a bundled customer with PG&E. Some people dislike the um, um, just being enrolled with 3CE and and wish to just go back to PG&E. There's a, a myriad of different reasons, but it is up to each individual customer why, whether they want to stay with 3CE or um, return to PG&E. And, and Trevor asks, why can't PG&E offer the same 2% discount or 5% or 7% that we talked about that 3CE offers? Yeah, that's a good question. So PG&E, um, when they set their rates, they, in general, when um, utilities set their rates, they look at their operating costs and they say, okay, what do we need to operate for all of our programs, for paying our staff, for paying, keeping the lights on ourselves, all of those things. And they determine how much, excuse me, how much they need to, in order to operate as a business. And so when they do that, that's what they submit to the CPUC. And so since 3CE is such a small organization, we have, um, we're growing, and so we're close to 40 um, employees now, then we are able to be um, smaller and leaner and faster. And in that way, we're able to reduce our costs compared to a very large company such as PG&E. And so we can provide that 2% discount from PG&E's rates that they wouldn't necessarily be able to, to provide. Thanks, Liz. All right, next question. Will 3CE offer incentives to help promote microgrids in the Central Coast? Um, so it is a potential. Um, there are all of the, the programs. Let me go back to that programs page. And so we can look at, um, these are all of the programs that we are currently have for this fiscal year. And it is something that is potential in the future. And so if you have an idea for a program that you think would be a great incentive, such as microgrids, then it is something that you can um, let the programs team know, let us know. And it is something that could be a possibility in the future. Um, currently, we don't have a microgrid um, program that we are working on, but it is, it is not out of the realm of possibility for sure. All right, Liz, we have a dual question here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so Trevor, thanks for the microgrid question. Marty wants to know, what's your process process for determining rates? It sounds like you're a utility under the state jurisdictional CPUC for your process. 
Yes, so we are an electricity utility. So in in a sense, we are a utility. So we do, we are also regulated by the CPUC in that way. And so to determine our rates, um, what we do is we take PG&E's rates and then we provide that 2% discount for off of their rates. And those that's how we currently set our rates. Um, and so I hope that answered your question that that's how we set our rates. So we take PG&E's and we provide our discount from that. So just to kind of fill in a little bit on that. Um, yes, please. You know, the, the PG&E is an investor owned utility and the rates are set with the CPUC and approved by the CPUC. So they get put in. And then um, Central 3CE is actually called an LSE. We're a government agency or a load serving entity. And we submit things like our resource plan and our um, RA, our resource adequacy to the CPUC. But the CPUC does actually not set, does not set our rates. Our rates are set by the board. And so the board, a good example is, is when COVID hit, we were the only CCA in California to issue the 50% discount in May and June. And what's interesting is, is we took that out of our revenue bucket and we are not asking for it back. It was the revenue that we crafted and created and we give it back into the communities. And so the utilities and the other CCAs actually didn't do that. We actually put that in place um, so that our customers actually could be protected during that time. So we, um, are, we have our board, which um, Liz showed earlier, and the board are the ones that determine the rates based upon that. And it is a public, um, it's done during a public presentation and everything's posted on our website. Does that help on that question? Okay. Yes, thank you so much, Susan, for filling that in. You're welcome. Okay, next one. Um, Marty also said, um, so we sound like we're an electricity broker. We don't technically generate anything because we've been talking about long-term contracts. We have contracts with providers and we sell to the public. So how can, how can we actually, our rates be cheaper than PG&E if we're, if we're buying and selling? Yeah. Yeah, that is really good. So you are correct in that in the fact that we do procure electricity on your behalf, and we do that by um, going to to different providers who are wind, solar, hydroelectric providers like that, and we are able to secure long, short, and long term contracts with them in order to buy that electricity, bring it here on your behalf. So we are doing what pg e did for you previously, where they would go out and they would either use their own power plants or they would buy from other sources as well, such as hydroelectric, wind, solar, geothermal, um, and they would bring that electricity here. And so that's what we do for you as well. We we buy that electricity on your on your behalf and then we provide it to you at that 2% discount from pg e So technically we're buying and sell we're buying in the same and working in the same market as the utility correct yes we are and, and so we're not like buying anything and reselling it to the public we're actually mm -hmm. um doing the long-term contracts like a utility and providing it just like the like just pg e is to the customer and we're using the um, pg es transmission lines exactly yes thank you susan okay all right another question Marty, I hope we answered your two questions. Um, another, we, now we get to another tough question. Mm -hmm. Are there protections from what happened in Texas? And because I'm reading that the bills are for the customers are rising incrementally due to supply and demand in Texas. Yes. And so there are protections for our customers. So that is part of being regulated by the CPUC. The customers in Texas who had such high bills were with companies that were not regulated in the same way. And so they bought electricity from a company at market price. And so during the, the storm that happened, those market prices skyrocketed. And here in California and for, um, for companies such as ours that are regulated by the CPUC, we are not allowed to go to high prices like that to sell to the customers. And so there are protections in place for your customer, for our customers that that won't happen. And then we will expand that just a little bit and say, is there a possibility that a situation like Texas could develop here? 
where we have um, an interruption of the energy supply due to the weather or the cold front or the Arctic factors? Yes, so there is a possibility, um, and it has actually happened in California. So a similar, something similar is the public safety power shutoffs or the PSPS events that happen. And those are when we have um, the possibility, the high possibility of a potential wildfire occurring. And so the PG&E has to shut down the grid at that point. Um, usually due to high winds and um, low moisture content in the air. And so at that time, there is a possibility that there is that, there would be that break in, um, in electricity for that time period. Um, and as always, you can have natural disasters that can cause outages as well. Um, and who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully we won't have freezing temperatures like they did in Texas, but no one thought in Texas that they were going to get to sub-zero either. So um, so it could happen, but it is it is not very likely. The most likely would be for the PSP of, PS events for uh, the potential fires. Thanks, Liz. And so Marty asks, following up on that question, have your mm -hmm. lines ever been turned off? Clients lost power during a fire, storm, wind, high event? Um, like a PG&E customer. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so since since you are a customer with PG&E and 3CE, and PG&E maintains those power lines, then yes, we have had those happen. Um, we've had a few up in Santa Cruz and San Benito counties, um, a little bit in Monterey, and then we actually had one a couple of months ago down here in San Luis Obispo County, um, and that was out towards the um, away from the coast a little bit and so it has happened here um, it's not very it doesn't happen very often just a few times a year but it can happen and it would since PG&E maintains the power lines it, if, if it's something they deem necessary then it would happen to you as a 3CE customer because you are a shared customer with PG&E and 3CE. All right, wonderful. Trevor's asking the really hard questions. You are, and I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Trevor says, can bg &E prevent 3CE from using its network? No, they cannot. So the CCAs, Community Choice Aggregates, were started based on a, um, a legislative bill that was passed in 2002. And so what it did is it mandated that companies such as ours that are CCAs can join the market and can use power lines from um, the investor-owned utilities such as PG&E, SCE, um, San Diego Gas and Electric, SCG and E. So we we can and will use those power lines um, since it is part of that legislative bill that we are allowed to. And how many CCAs are there in PG&E territory right now? Um, there, I don't know right now, PG&E, 13, 13, thank you. There's 13 PG&E, yeah. and, and there's and what, 24, 23, 23 <laughs> in the state of California. Yes. And how many, how many customers are, are, is our CCA serving? Oh, um, millions of customers. It's, it's estimated to be approximately at 50% of the total customer load, and so for, just as an example, for um, our CCA, we are serving approximately 400, 450,000 customers in our five counties. And so if you multiply that by 23 to get the total number of CCAs in the state, it's millions of customers are being served by CCAs currently. All right, now we're gonna switch over to uh, Chris's question. This is, please explain the residential electrification program, energy program. Yeah, so this is to help with customers who are um, who are building a new home and to help them, it's an incentive to help them be an all electric home rather than having gas for heating or cooking or anything like that. Um, and so it's just to help, it's an incentive to help customers build as an, uh, as an all electric. Um, and you can find a lot more information about that specific program on our website. There's the programs drop down, and one of them, um, one of the pages is about the residential electrification program. Cool. Okay, Carol says, please explain what rate is used when one chooses to use the 100% renewable option 3C Prime. That's a really good question. So you would take the rate that you are currently on, and let's say it is residential, so E-T-O-U-C, it's residential time of use rate C. 
Um, and so you take that rate that you're on and you add eight tenths of a cent per kilowatt hour. So if it's, for example, 11 cents per kilowatt hour, then it would be 11.8 cents per kilowatt hour from um, when you're on 3C prime. So it's just a little adder. Um, and typically for residential customers, it, as it comes out to be about five to ten dollars a more more per month for being on 3c prime and that's it it's it's not it's really not very much and following up on that question mm -hmm. is i heard that renewable energy is more expensive and so how can you provide rate savings if you're heading towards 100 percent renewable yeah that's that is also a really good question so um the cost of renewable electricity is is going down, it is decreasing um, as more comes online. So more solar panels, more wind farms, all of those things come online. Then the overall cost of electricity for renewables goes down. And then also with that, we as a small agency are able to make really good contracts with specific provide, um, providers. So we buy the electricity from them at a really good rate because we're able to we're just able to be competitive in the market and and have competitive rates. And so in that way, with th those two things combined, we are able to be competitive and and have competitive rates while still be going towards the 100% uh, renewable mark that we're working towards. All right, everybody, we have another five minutes left. So sneak your questions in the chat box or the Q&A as we're getting ready to close down. Um, I have another question while we're waiting for everybody to put their last questions in the chat box. Oh, <laughs> Harry's got one. Harry, we'll take you first before I put the next question up. I'm an existing 3CE customer waiting for permission to operate my solar 20.4 uh, 20, 20 kilowatt system from PG&E. Tesla's managing the process with PG&E. But do I need to do anything with 3CE to make sure I get my what if, to make sure I get my extra power and or my credit NSC from 3CE? Yeah, so you do not actually need to do anything. So when you are able to actually flip the switch and turn on your electric your solar panels um, with PG&E, then at that time they will send us all of the information that we need to know, and so we will change you from being a customer who is um, non-solar to a solar customer at that time. And so then you'll start that process um, and that will be your true update. And so you do not need to do anything extra. It's super simple. You just make sure you work every work with everything with Tesla, with PG&E, and then we will get that information and you'll be a 3CE solar customer at that time. So we, sh so my information is shared with you on the, on the solar? Yes, it is. All of your information is shared with us um, because you are customers. When you enroll with 3CE, you are our customer. So your information is shared with us and it's all safe and secure behind closed and locked doors. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it is shared with us as a customer. So we do know, um, we will know when you turn on, when you become a solar customer as well. And then Rosemary says, so as your company grows, Will your rates go up as your operating costs go up? So that's a good question. And um, we never know exactly what is going to happen as far as operating costs. There could be some large disaster that happens, but we are we are committed to having competitive rates. And so if there needs to if the rates need to go up a little bit because the just the way the market is and we have then they will have to, but then they could also potentially go down as well. So um, we do not anticipate our operating costs going up because we are a growing company. Um, to give you an idea, our um, our staff costs, our administrative costs, is approximately two percent of our overall budget. And so, even by adding um, more employees, we're not going to affect the rates in that way. And then, adding on top of that, the budget has a small percentage that's the revenue protection. So that way, if there's some emergency, it like the COVID May and June, when, when the 50% discounts were given, it was taken out of the revenue bucket and not out of raising rates. And that's why the customers were not asked to pay it back. So the structure is, um, so you wanna talk about the S&P fiscal? The, the rating is a, 
Yeah, so we received an A rating from S&P Global. And so what that means is that we we have been, we are financially stable and we were able to pay down our debt. So when we started as a company, we did have uh, we did have loans that we needed to take out to be able to procure electricity in the beginning. And we were able to pay those down in record time. And so we have um, been able to pay those. And then we've also been able to put money into our reserves as well. So we are, financially and fiscally solvent we're a, we're steady we're able to continue with what we're doing and provide programs and discounts for our customers um, by doing all of that all right everybody it is just a minute or two before seven o'clock so if there are any more questions sneak them in we'll wait for one more moment as we want to say thank you to liz for her amazing navigation of all the q and a's all the questions and giving us straight answers um marcella says thank you very much she appreciated the information that you gave thank you yes and and thank you all for attending i know it's a um tuesday evening and so thank you for giving us some time to answer some questions for you and um if you do have more questions, then do please email us at info at 3cenergy.org or um, call us at that number 888-909-6227. Um, and again, if, we're, if anyone missed, we did have a typo on that. So it's 6227. Um, 